it was very difficult to find the right Martinez. But I went to this lab when they told me, Martinez cannot be handsome. And I'm like, why? If he's handsome, he can get any woman he wants oh, while man. he's alone. And I was like, oh. that's a different story. I know. Very interesting. Yes. So it was, I was like, no, 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 no. It's a decision. It's a conscious decision to be such an asshole. Welcome to Bitch Talk. I'm your host, Aaron, here with my co-host, Ange, a.k.a. Captain Party, and our producer, Shar. And over the last 10 years, we've been elevating marginalized voices through interviews and events. Sometimes over a glass of whiskey. But if you're thirsty for more bitches, find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com and follow us on Instagram. A big thank you to 48 Hills and our listeners for voting us Best of the Bay Best Podcast in 2022. And now, on with the show. Welcome, Bitch Talkers. We are at SF Film Fest 2023. I have the director and the producer from the film Martinez, Lorena Padilla, and the producer, Georgina Gonzalez. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You're welcome. For the director, can you please tell us what Martinez is about? Yes. Well, Martinez is a movie about second chances. It's about a late bloomer. I'm also a late bloomer, but whatever. Same. <laughs> so Welcome. that happens. But this is about a 60-year-old guy that doesn't want to face the fact that he's about to be retired until the new guy, the guy that is going to replace him, starts working next to him and he has to train him. Yes. So yeah. then a neighbor is found dead in the building. And well, you know, uh, he found his, her stuff. Yes. And well, he starts like, Correct. Amalia. Amalia. Amalia, that's yes. her name. That I love her. her name. Yeah, and then she, well, he starts discovering, like, new things in life, flavors, landscapes, whatever, and, well, it's about that, discovering new things in life when you are old. Yeah. Like me. You can do that. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. Um, I want to know, where did this story come from? Because it felt very personal. Okay, so uh, I have daddy issues, so oh. I'm, I'm sorry. I go Ooh, to who therapy. Doesn't? Yeah, but well, it started as a way to try. I was trying to understand my dad. I always had a kind of weird relationship with him. So for me, it was kind of like an essay, you know, like I, I need to understand this kind of character. Uh, that's what happened. But then, of course, it was evolving when I was developing the project. And then um, I was working in London as a waitress. And one day I found this free newspaper. And there was this story about this woman that you found dead. Uh, she had been dead for two years inside her apartment. And they found her <laughs> wrapping some Christmas presents. That really happened. Okay. So... For me, I don't know. I just make kind of the connection between like my what will have to happen for my dad to come out of his shell. And mm. in a way, I made that connection. And it was about that. And then, you know, life happened. Yes. I met my producer, Georgina <laughs> Gonzalez. So we started like developing the project a lot, different labs and all that. And it was about loneliness and about second chances. And so it started like with my dad. But then, you know, life happened. I got married. I got a kid. I divorced. So all that and, and that ended real, up. Real shit. Real shit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's about like, you know, discovering life. Yeah. For me. Well, how did you two meet then? And how were you brought onto the film? That's a great story. So we are both Fulbright uh, scholars and we met during excuse, orientation. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm drink my wine. But we were, you know, I think. Uh, two of three people who are not out of a hundred who were not there to do an MBA and run the country. So we just kind of gravitated towards each other <laughs> and uh, we just started talking and then we uh, kept in touch. She went to the East Coast. I went to West Coast to study. And uh, one day she sends me this wonderful script. I was a junior TV exec. I was, you know, trying to find the amazing new voices that needed to be heard. And uh, Lorena sent me Martinez as a sample script. And I just loved it. And I was like, yes, let's work together on a lot of TV shows, but also let's produce this movie because <laughs> yes. it's wonderful. And we did, um, you know, a, a year later after that, uh, we got the funds to produce. But then when we were ready and we had cast and everything, COVID happened. 
Oh, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm really lucky. Yeah. <laughs> that kind Aren't of we all? Aren't we all? Always yes. happens yes. to yes. me. So, yeah. But you had some really great stories last night about how COVID made it the, the shoot very intimate. Yes. Well, I yes. must say that. Yeah, we had to cancel, right? We were about to shoot on May 2020. Ha! Ha! Of course no. not. So we had to, we said, we're going to postpone it. But we didn't know. So I said, okay, yeah, I'm never shooting my film. That's it. But then we decided to shoot at the end of 2020, in the middle of the pandemic, in Guadalajara, okay. in Mexico. But then it was great because we had like these protocols that she made really difficult and complicated for her, not for me. Okay. Because like for me, it was like, I was able to be in touch with the actors, with their first AD, with the script and the cinematographer. And that was it. So it was wonderful to be able to work like that. Mm -hmm. I said, cut, and no one was allowed to come and jump and I need to <laughs> change this. I need no, you're not allowed. Right. So for me, it was difficult for production, I think. I think. It was okay, but you know, uh, it was very sad because I was going to come in on week three to visit the set. I was in Mexico City, um, isolating, and then, um, you know, the there was a COVID outbreak in the crew, so I couldn't come, but, um, and we had to make some tough calls, but I think, you know, Lorena was amazing because she only had 21 days to shoot the film originally. Oh because of casting and stuff like that, you know, the scheduling. But um, but then, you know, a few people got COVID and we said, you know, the one thing that we can't go come back from is, you know, somebody dying, you know? Right. So we have to be very risk it. judicious yeah. and uh, we stop for five days and we won't come back until everybody tests negative and we can continue. So she lost five days of sh shooting and I was like, if we need to raise more funds or whatever it is, we can do that later, but you know, lives are priority so um she got the film in the can in 17 days so i was yeah cheers to that cheers to Another that cheers you know i didn't remember it's like when you give yeah. birth and you don't remember no like but i have anymore. dogs yeah <laughs> <laughs> same. same i know furry children <laughs> i do have a question about casting yes can you talk about the lead ignacio martinez yes um yes. Francisco Reyes, um, what were you looking for exactly? And then what kind of notes did you have to give your lead actor? Okay. Oh, amazing. It was very difficult, honestly, to find the right Martinez. Because, for example, I went to this, I'm not going to say the name, but I went to this lab in America when they told me, no, he cannot be handsome. Okay. Martinez cannot be handsome. It was a guy, 50 years old. And I'm like, why? No, because if he if he's handsome, he can get any woman he wants oh, while man. he's alone. And I was like, oh. that's a different story. I know. Very interesting. Yes. So it was I was like, no, 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 no. It's a decision. It's a conscious decision to be such an asshole. Oh, no, I cannot say that, right? Yes, you no. can. It's called bitch talk. OK, yeah. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. So <laughs> it's the beauty it's of a, this podcast. Oh, my. Amazing. <laughs> I love it. So that's that's it. So we were I mean, we did a lot of casting with Mexican actors mm -hmm. and they all felt sorry for the 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 the, the, the character mm -hmm. like, oh, poor Martinez. He's alone. I mean, like, no. No, look, he's not nice with Conchita. He's not nice mm -hmm. with Pablo. You know, he, he needs to learn. Right. And so it was very difficult until one day uh, a friend of mine from Chile, he sent me the trailer of A Fantastic Woman. And I saw him and I said, oh, that's Martinez. And we sent him the script just like that. And he loved it. And we had a conversation and he said, yeah, let's do this. So it was... Uh, it was amazing, but then I went to Chile to shoot a teaser to see if he, if it was gonna be able to work with him. Mm -hmm. And what I like because I I mostly a screenwriter. That's that's what this is my first feature film, but I, I'm a writer. And the fun of being shooting is that I can change everything. Right. I mean, what's the point if you're gonna follow the script? No fun at all. So I arrived, I have sent him a script and I said, no, we're going to change everything. We're going to. And he was like, yeah. So I said, oh, this is the guy. It was mostly like to see. And and for Pancho, you know, he he does a lot of TV okay. in Chile. And I think he has been like 
he's an amazing theater actor as well, but in TV, they just didn't let him mm. until he did A Fantastic Woman and, and film, all that. So the, the direction were like mostly that it is enough. You know, you are, you're okay, that's fine. Just like doing the action, like mm -hmm. acting less. I don't know if that makes sense. More subdued, subtle. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, you don't need to be more. And you know, because on TV, sometimes like people, they are not watching, they're just listening, right. especially in Latin America. Right. So it's like, it was like, no, it's fine like that. So it took us honestly like a couple of days. I can still see on the, on the movie, whether like the first shots when we were not tuned mm -hmm. yet, because it's normal, but it was about like, no, it is enough. Like him believing that it was enough. And yeah. Recalibrated. Yes. To the right tone. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have to be uh, overtly an asshole. <laughs> it was just kind of like an understood, yes, yes. And understated asshole. Exactly. When I started talking to him There's about my dad, my brother was also on the on the shooting. He was okay. on the production side. So we were like during the breaks, we were talking to him about my dad, like real stories. And he was like, oh, OK, now I get it. He got it. He got it. Uh, I do want to talk about cinematography because there are points in the film at the pool, at the park, that you kind of refocus the audience to maybe his gaze. Can you talk about your cinematographer and those conversations? Yeah, um, Gerardo Guerra is an amazing cinematographer, please. Like, um, he did Dos Estaciones mm. from Juan Pablo, uh, that uh, Gonzalez, they premiered in Sundance, right? Like yes. last oh, year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but he's Gerardo Guerra is from Guadalajara. So I'm very lucky because my producer, she owns uh, amazing lenses. Oh, you know? yeah. That's helpful. You got to place with some good toys. It was fine. Oh, yeah. Gerardo was like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> exactly. Nice. So I wanted to be like, very, I love graphic novels. I really love graphic novels. So I wanted a very still camera, you know, with very geometric lines, but not the aesthetic, like not over the top, you know, that it's so beautiful that no, I just wanted like the camera very still mm -hmm. and the characters, the actors to be able to move mm -hmm. uh, on the frame. So Gerardo got that like immediately. He went to school. He went to London film school. London I think. film school. Yes. Yeah. A yeah. very talented kid in, in the candy store. <laughs> no, I know. No, it's, he's super talented, but he's very easy to work with because all the female first time like directors they told me I was asking for advice, like what was the most difficult thing in your first feature film? And they said, oh my God, working with the cinematographer. They did not believe in me. They wanted to change everything. So I was so afraid, you know? And Gerardo, amazing. He was like, he was, okay, no, it's okay if you don't want to move the camera, but what about a dolly in? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, let's see this. And oh my God, I was obsessed. I wanted a dolly in every show, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do this, let's do that. Right. So it was, it was a lot of fun to work with him. He's very, very respectful. You know, like, the, we need that kind of guys on shooting. Yeah. You know, that they can, it was like, all the time it was just, yes, chief, no chief, you know. Yes, <laughs> that's what you needed. That's what I needed. And well, he got it. He, you know, he came in or stepped in when he really had something to contribute to your vision as opposed to... It's it more was, of a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was way better. I mean, just like a still camera. No, that's the mm -hmm. collaboration part. And with you as well. There was like after the COVID spread, I was going to cut something. Mm -hmm. And even she was in Mexico City. She called me and says, no, don't cut that. Scene. Don't, don't cut, cut that scene. That's make it shot. work. <laughs> make it work. Make it work. So that's the thing. It's not that they have to agree with me all the time. They have to push me. Mm hmm. No, but it was, you know, we knew how much you loved that scene. It, Which and, scene uh, are you talking we, about? It's uh, the karaoke scene. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I was yeah. going to cut it. So lively. Yeah, and, you know, they all come together so beautifully in that scene that you wrote where they come out of their shells and they connect humanly. So There's a lot of emotion. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I think she was, you know, afraid and, you know, of, of you know, not having enough time to shoot it properly and yeah. whatnot and the locations. It was very complicated. But, um, but you resolve the situation and you shot it and it's amazing yeah but that's yeah. like teamwork right yeah. you know it was like no Lorena please do that and then Gerardo said yeah we can do like a 
Una cámara en mano. Oh, yeah, like a hand shot, a handheld. Handheld. Camera. He said, okay, we don't have time, you know, to start moving like uh, the tripod and all that. Let's solve this. So it's, it was like a teamwork. Well, I'm glad you didn't cut that sh because you could, well, we could talk about it off mic, but you couldn't have cut that. Shit. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for being on Bitch Talk. We've been speaking with a director, Lorena Padilla, and writer, I should say, and producer Georgina Gonzalez of the film Martinez at SF Film Fest 2023. Thank you so much for being on Bitch Talk. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for joining us on today's show. You can find more information about this episode in our show notes. If you're missing us, you can visit us at bitchtalkpodcast.com to sign up for our newsletter and buy us a cup of coffee. Did you know we're also on the radio? You can find us at bff.fm. And lastly, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. All the cool bitches are doing it. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.